All right, DeLonghi Stilosa. So this is what the video is about. So I don't have a block your filter thing. So I've done this. I don't know what pressure it cuts off. I'm just doing this to show you what pressure your Stilosa can get to. Okay, we're gonna see what uh, pressure this uh, Stilosa can get to. So let's see if I can just hold the pressure with my uh, modified uh, fake uh, blockier portafilter basket thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn the pressure up. And there's the pump all the way. I have some leakage down here. There we go. Oh, see? It, so I can, I'm holding it back. Yeah, I, I don't want to break my gauge. This is me that I'm holding it. I can hold it there, right? I'll go back here and I'll blast forward. See, I could put it past 160 PSI, which is past. Um, and you know, like, look, there's your, there's nine bar, 130 ish. There's nine bar. Okay. Like, I mean, I, it'll just sit there at 11 bar all day. 9, 10, 11 bar, it'll just sit there. Okay. See? It was starting to lose there because I'll show here, I'll show you what I've got, what I've done. It's just a Ziploc container lid. I, I've lost the bottom of it. I give it to my child for something. Anyways, um, yeah. So I just put that in there. Uh, to, uh, to demonstrate that there doesn't appear to be a pressure release valve on this thing. Um, as far as I can tell, I mean, you, we just saw it sat there at, uh, you know, at nine bars, 130 PSI. So it sat there for a while. There's just another interesting fact here. While it's, uh, at, at preheat, the pressure, uh, it, it sits around two bar. So it'll stop about 30 PSI. See, green light, and it sits just just under 30 psi there so just just below two bar one and a half bar probably or something like that is what it's trying to sit at so i'll just talk about the nerdiness uh this is this hole is here because i am i realize you can get a lot more heat to this if i just cut a hole under here which is the original purpose for this uh, the gauge will be mounted. I'm gonna I'm gonna mount it somewhere over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm going to put the uh, the T assembly in here, and I've ordered a longer uh, PFTE hose to just do my routing inside of there because it's uh, just a little tight. I got these fittings uh, at a local store that sells um, fittings <laughs> and uh, this is Amazon 15 bucks Canadian this little lid guy is just connected uh, glued down with some silicone uh, so I just went around and worked it off with a thin palette knife basically it's not particularly perfect for this I'm sure if you if you do other things you might have other tools that might have been more suited but um so i preheated the machine for probably a half an hour i just left it on for a half hour because i noticed that it was i was able to uh get a little bit of uh action off of like this little lip here there's a little lip there so i <clears throat> was able to get a little bit of uh, action from under that lip once it was preheated for a while. And then once I got underneath this corner, I just worked my way around, All right? That was it. Okay, yeah, so this is a dimmer switch, a single pole dimmer switch <clears throat> meant for incandescent bulbs. I removed the circuit board from inside of the switch uh, and I modified it uh, to be able to fit a guitar knob because I do music instrument repairs and stuff. In some testing, besides all of this mod stuff, I've learned while I'm pouring a shot when I'm done, uh, before I turn the pump off, I just have a cup sitting here. I mean, you could do it elsewhere if you have a different, if you have the original 
Pinarello on it or whatever, you could just put it probably right here. But I just I just blast it out while I'm still pumping, and it seems to uh, suck some of that pressure out of the out of the porter filter and the and the group head. It's not perfect. I am going to attempt to tee a manual relief valve in between the uh, gauge and the group head and just see if that works. Because technically that's kind of where it goes. Not really, but we'll, we'll, we'll just see how that works. So that's about that, I guess. Yeah, the pump is very, very strong. Very, very, very strong. And it does not appear that there is any relief valve situation. That might something I'd be will be looking into. It's just a standard, what appears to be a standard DeLonghi, you know, pressure relief thing. Uh, ideally, I, f I feel like I'm just gonna buy one that, that's for a Gadget Pro and just put it on there because I'm pretty sure it's the same Ulca pump. Now we're in. Okay, so as you can see, it's kind of tight in here. I did not like how it was mounted, so I'm ordering, I ordered a longer hose. So yes, yeah, so this appears to just be a regular DeLonghi, pressure release valve I have I have high density foam that I have put in there around that Ulca pump it seriously has dampened the noise anyways you can't see it very well from here I'm going to also I've ordered a PID system that looks exactly like the one that you see from the gadget pro from the specialty coffee shop thing or whatever um, it's the whole setup including the the relay is 65 Canadian uh, with delivery, so shipping. So I'm going to put a PID on this thing. I'm going to learn how to make espresso. Okay, so the DeLonghi website is pretty good. You can replace all these. Like one of the, the, the steam one is 125 Celsius. The uh, brew pad one is 105 Celsius. And it does, if you preheat this too much, it will boil. If you purge the group head, it will be boiling water. It will be puffing out steam and it is too hot, much too hot. So I don't think there's an under temperature problem with this. It's almost like it heats up very quick. I don't have a system enough to measure the temperature properly of what's coming out of the group head. And I'm honestly, I'm not interested in going down that route. I bought a Ranchilio Silva steam wand. That's gonna be here in a week. I'm just gonna replace that because that's just like replacing every steam wand on any DeLonghi. They're all the same, kind of like swivel plastic thing there. This one falls in line with that. I, f I also feel like you could really rep replace this valve if you wanted to. I mean, honestly, like what's an espresso machine? It's a hot water heater and a pump. And you need to be able to control those, right? So this has a pump, it has a hot water heater. Uh, it makes steam. Uh, it now shows me pressure. I will be able to control the temperature of it. What What's an espresso machine at that point? This machine is repairable like you can buy replacement parts from DeLonghi on the website it's really easy and it's like you can take this whole thing apart in probably three minutes okay six minutes you can take it away in six minutes you know eventually I'm gonna get fussy and I, uh, I'll want something that's cuter maybe so this will be like my shop espresso machine or something uh, or my you know my my little bakery espresso machine or something for when I'm just Got it. Got it back on my on my shop bench. I can make an espresso anywhere at that point, or a latte because I, I drink lattes particularly. I just thought I'd point this out. This is like a QC thing, I guess. Um, this came like this. You can somebody somebody gave that guy a little bit of a hard time. Uh, the steam gets up to like uh, two bar as well. You know what? Let's just play for a second here, okay? Here, I'll turn the light on. Let's just do something, because I'm always impressed by the shower head for what it, it is for what it is. Honestly, I'm impressed for what it is. Okay? There is. I've taken it out. There is one hole that uh, on it that is not through. Other than that, they're all there. Underneath, there's a brass fitting. And on either side of this screw appears to be uh, channels for it. And a lot of the water comes through that area. Uh, I'm just turning the pressure down here. A lot of the water comes through that area. Okay, so here's the thing. If I turn it down, it takes a long time 
And 80 PSI, and now water will come out. Every time. It's almost like not a drop of water wants to come out before you hit six bar. So I'm just gonna turn this up. It'll only sit around six, little over six bar. Uh, or right around six bar when you don't have any resistance against the pump. And yeah, there's full. And the so the water is really really hot there. You can see that, and the, the burner just turned off. So when the pump's not running full power, it it can stay too hot for too long. So it's showering not bad today, I mean, I don't know what a distribution system underneath a shower head looks like for a proper machine, I guess I'm going to have to investigate that. Uh, but it's, it's definitely not great. Uh, so that's that. Alright. So it comes and sits back down at around, you know. The one and a half bar, two bar, just below two bar. Um, and if I turn the water on with, with that steam switch, just like that, and so it, it it takes a little bit to get that pressure out of that group head just on water mode. Um, I'll turn it on steam mode and just to show you that it uh, we'll see if it we got a we got a minute left on my video it heats up fairly quick to be honest especially when the whole machine's been on for a few minutes or so or 10 ish so the steam stops around the same thing 30 psi two bar just below just below two bar one and a half bar oh Okay, so it came up a little spicy this time for some reason. I don't think I've ever seen it come up at 40. Um, but yeah, so you you got two bar pressure there, uh, two plus bar pressure there, and when it's preheated, and it maintains for quite a while. 15 seconds left on this video. 